For above all, rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is involved, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who built everything in every way. I have read from Ephesians 1st chapter verses 15 through 23. May the Lord bless the reading of this word. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the many blessings you bestowed upon us. Thank you for giving us a spirit, mind, and voice for Thanksgiving. Lord, we have so many things to be thankful for. First of all, thank you for just waking us up this morning. Yes. Thank you for giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength to be clothed in our right mind. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your compassion set on you every morning, dear Heavenly Father. I ask right now that you bless the sick and shut in right now, dear Heavenly Father. Touch them with a healing finger of love, dear Heavenly Father. I ask that you bless those that are bereaved right now, dear Heavenly Father. Please be a comfort and give them peace that surpasses all understanding. I ask that you bless those that are in jail, those that don't know you in the free pardon of their sins, dear Heavenly Father. And let them know that without you, there is nothing. Dear Heavenly Father, right now, like I said, we have so much to be thankful for. I thank you for all the people that are here in this place of worship this morning, dear Heavenly Father. I ask that you bless them and keep them, dear Heavenly Father. Bless those that are on their way. Please give them safe traveling grace to come here, dear Heavenly Father. And when we leave and depart from this place today, give us that same grace for traveling mercy, dear Heavenly Father. I ask that you bless our pastor and our first lady. Yeah. Continue yeah. to give him a word to give to us the people. I ask that you bless the speaker of the hour, yeah. dear Heavenly yeah. Father. Mm -hmm. Give her a word from you that we can go out, we can take it into our hearts, and that we can go out and tell the world about you. Yeah. I ask that you be with us throughout the remainder yeah. of this service, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to bless and keep us. Of course, in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
time for the offering and the offering for the prayer.
breast cancer survivor.
and his family. Yes, Thank you for asking a new kid on the block. Oh, God. <laughs> God is so great, though. And uh, today we give him all the honor and praise for yes. celebrating your women's and your men's day. Yes. We say to God be the glory. Yes, I bring you greetings from Thankful Baptist Church where Reverend Aaron T. Murphy is my pastor. And uh, uh, it's just a blessing to be here, the whole Thankful uh, family. I have two of our members here, uh, Sister Dr. Georgia, Minister Washington, yes. who's stand, and our friend at the church, Brother uh, Bradley, James Bradley. Praise yes. God. Thank you for being here. But you know, see, God in his infinite wisdom, oh, ordained that I would be here today. And you see, I got some Baptists here. Because God has had Sister Georgina and myself on Zoom with Bible study for over a year now. And I got an armor bearer and a praiser right there up in the middle. Deacon Boyd, right there in the middle. Oh, I know it's going to be good today. Sister Bellwell in the corner on the praise. Sister Ann helping with the offering. Sister Mary, Sister Melvina, I know all y'all be family. Lord, it's the Lord. Sister, uh, Sister Jane, Lord, have mercy. Brother David, all on that Zoom. We have praise and worship on the Zoom, y'all, with the Bible study. Praise Amen. God. Amen. And uh, did I miss anybody? I'll leave anybody out. Oh, uh, Lincoln Langston. Yes, Lord. So uh, today, God has ordained that I be here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. And that's good news. Amen. I thank God. Oh, I thank God. Also, I've heard that you all have some of the best cooks <laughs> on this side of Eastern Tennessee. Yes. And especially cake baking. Yes. <laughs> I hear that sister Bella can cook cakes and it tastes like a little piece of heaven. <laughs> I'm waiting on that little piece of heaven. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> uh, and to talk Uh, told me that they went to a family reunion in Martinsville, Virginia. And they asked me where is I uh, from, I'm from, and I told them between Roanoke, Martinsville, and Greensboro, a little place called Eden. And I said, I have relatives in Martinsville, Virginia. My sisters live there, three of them. And then uh, uh, they said, well, uh, we have relatives there too. And I said, well, what are their names? What's the family reunion your name? They said the Dillard and the Harrison family reunion. Y'all, guess what? My name is Petty Patricia Dillard. <laughs> Spencer Cromwell. And I told them we're related some kind of way. Oh, yes, but we're related because we're children of God. And I'm so glad to be here today. And I feel at home because I do know all a lot of you. And those I don't know, I've seen your smiling faces this morning. You're my family, and I'm at home. Amen. For uh, a scripture reading, as I talked to uh, Sister Beverly, uh, wondering if you had a theme or not, she gave me about five or six thoughts at first. I said, Sister Beverly, we got to narrow this down. So we, we don't give women that many choices. <laughs> so it would have been a combined uh, uh, sum. And if you please, uh, for the scripture reading, would you please turn your attention with me to the book of Acts, the first chapter, verses 3 through 8. And also, we have Mark 16, 15 through 8 as a thought. And you may stand for the reverence of the word if you're able. Or see, be seated in the presence of the Lord. Acts chapter 1, verses 3 through 8, King James Version. To whom he also showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of a father, which saith, He, ye have 
heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And six, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. And this is the focus verse. Number eight. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth. And then Mark 16, 15 through 18. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. 16, that, that he that believe and believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. You may be seated. Today, I would like to give a few words of encouragement on the topic of men and women living and witnessing the gospel. And that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And young people, I have another one to add to that. Don't move until you get power. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for allowing me your handmade servant, Lord, your vessel today to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Allow me, Lord, the Holy Spirit to take what you have given me, Holy Spirit, Jesus, that Jesus may be lifted up and God be glorified. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, O oh Lord, be acceptable to that sight. O oh Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. Amen. In Amen. Jesus' name I pray. In celebrating Women's Day, we find that God from the beginning of time had a powerful purpose and plan for women. So God saw in Genesis that man was alone and did not have help. So God made him a help me. Everybody say help me. Help me. And he, he caused man to fall asleep. And out of him he took a rib and formed a woman. And that means taken out of and closed up the flesh thereof. Mm -hmm. And women We've been helping me ever since then. <laughs> I said we've been helping me ever since then. So let's call on some help me. Let's look at the Bible. All right. Who did the Holy Ghost come upon to say you shall conceive inside of you? Oh, yes. A uh, 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 son, and his name shall be called Jesus, and he's going to be the Savior of the world. Who was that? A woman. Yes. A woman called the Virgin Mary. And a young people, she was a young woman, around 30, between 14 to 16, they say. All right, and, and then who did Jesus meet at the well to give everlasting water? Oh, the woman at the well. Oh, and the good Samaritan woman. And what did she do after he ministered to her about that everlasting water? She said, Well, who is it? I am he. Yeah. She ran to the city and she told the gospel, the good news. Come look at a man that knows everything about me. Oh, that's helped me the gospel, you all. All right, and come on. And what about spreading the good news when Jesus rose from the dead? Oh, tell me that a woman was the first one. There had to look upon the Savior. And then he told her, you know, Synoptic. That 
that means that they are same or similar. They have a similar story in each one. Yes. And we have Mary Mary there. Oh, Mary Magdalene, you've heard of. And uh, Mary, the mother of James at the tomb and all. And they ran to tell about a Savior who was risen. So, now that was surely witnessing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Am I right? Women, you've been helping me with the gospel a long time. Oh, yes. Now, even in our scripture today, we find that women were present in Jerusalem in the books of Acts. And let's look at the background. Luke, who is the author of Acts, continues the fulfillment of the Great Commission. You are probably most familiar with how it is given in Matthew 28 and 19. Go ye therefore, go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. But don't you dare do anything. Don't you move till the Holy Ghost comes. Yes. Now, the scripture had to be fulfilled. Don't move until you receive power. The word for power in the Greek language is dunamis. Yes. And the strong concordance says that it's miraculous power. I like that even better. Oh, yes. And we have other rock words derived from dunamis, dynamite, huh? and dynamic. Well, what does that mean? All oh, the ability, strength, force, might, potency, all those strength words. Well, you might say that's all well and good, but what is a witness? And y'all, we know we have all kinds of witness and witnesses. Mm -hmm. But the spiritual witness that we're talking about today means to see or hear or know something, evidence, to certify, to vouch for. And the scripture didn't mean that we should be bystanders as some witnesses are. Like in our world when we witness injustice. And we have heard so much of that recently. And how people just stand by, but they are witnesses. And some do nothing. But well, we're not going to be like that today and after today's world. You see, because we're going to fulfill the scripture and the Holy Ghost will come upon us before we go out to witness. God wants us in our scripture. He wants us to just uh, depend solely on him before we become a witness. In our scripture today, we find that Jesus has been preparing, preparing the disciples for three years and talking with them, doing miracles and preaching, teaching. And it was about time for his departure. And as he, in the scripture today, it's about 40 days before he was going to depart and ascend into heaven. And he was appearing to the disciples and still doing all kinds of miracles, signs, and wonders. And they still had doubt. But he told them that he must go away because he had to go away so that the Holy Spirit could come. And that he was going to pray to the Father that he would send them a comforter, which would be the Holy Spirit. And that he would give them power. But they were still afraid. So he told them, don't you move. Don't you leave Jerusalem, because they're in Jerusalem at this time. Don't you leave until you receive power. Don't move until the Holy Ghost comes. And the book of John even says that when he said this, he was talking to the disciples. He breathed on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And then in chapter 2, we find that during the day of the Feast of the Weeks, the 
day of Pentecost. This is now 10 more days added. That we find that Jesus, at the day of Pentecost, after he had ascended, that they were in the upper room and women, there were women there. There's about 120 people there, according to the scripture. I said that women were present also. And we all know the story. There came suddenly from heaven as of a rushing and mighty wind. That was the Holy Ghost. And it filled the whole house. Can we let the Holy Ghost fill us today? We will allow Him when we have faith enough to believe after we have received. And it filled the house and there appeared cloven tongues on each of their heads. Can you imagine, right here now, if we all gathered in unity like that, suddenly we heard a mighty rushing wind came filled this temple here. Hallelujah. And we started speaking in other languages. But everybody could understand everybody in their own language. Oh, what a mighty God. And those dignitaries on the outside, when they saw them, said, this is not the hour for them to be. They must be drunk, but this is not the hour. When the Holy Ghost get on you, Lord have mercy. You might feel like you're drunk sometimes. He's a mighty God. Yes, Lord. Can you imagine here in Jackson City if that happened? But you see, as followers of Christ and as believers, we are already, after receiving him and having faith, we have the Holy Spirit within us. And Jesus comes to live inside of us. But we have to have faith and believe it and receive it. So how does that work for us today to be a witness for Christ? I'll finish and wrap it up here. As witnesses for Christ, we are to demonstrate that choir was seen and show. Demonstrate our words and our actions and the attitude that we are seen and believed about the Lord who has forgiven us of our sins and offered us eternal life. In other words, Christians should be a witness for the Lord 24-7. Yeah. 365 days in a year, all the time, in other words. And the Holy Spirit gives us spiritual gifts to witness. We can't just go on out and just witness and just say anything. We have to be in power. First of all, the Holy Spirit wants us to be flexible women so we won't get bent out of shape. Well, remember we are just instruments sharing God's good news. Stay prayed up and worded up. We don't ever know when we might have to witness and help someone. The Holy Spirit is to cultivate. He's the one to cultivate. We're to plant the seed of the word into those who we meet. But he's the one who cultivates. Don't go trying to put the word in somebody. And as we say, be my the Bible. We have to let the Holy Spirit do that. We have to let him also convict. We're not convictors. Who told you you were holy than thou? Oh, yes. And the Holy Spirit will convert. That is, convert the soul of that person as witnesses, as we witness love and kindness. See, we have to go with love and kindness. Yes. And that will help them from being lost and dying and hell bound to be a born again, hell bound, saved in Jesus Christ. Because the Holy Spirit gives life. And as I said, I'm about to close. Now, how can you be a witness? Because a witness you have to. I'm not talking about like on Steve Harvey. I'm not talking about like Judge Judy. I'm not talking about those witnesses. Yeah, come on, uh, that's man's way. Yeah. I mean, you 
your watch that. <laughs> but praise be to God to be a witness. Yes. Let me witness a little bit. Uh, See, the last time that I had been at Martha Davis, in order to be a witness, I had to go through some stuff. Yes. Uh -huh. right. yeah. Had to go through yeah. some things. Yeah. So that he could get his word, put his word in me so when I go out, I won't be going out on my power. Uh -huh. Not my power, yeah. not my power. Yeah. But by the Spirit of God, yeah. yes, Lord. Yeah. Since I was here the last time, my husband has had died, has died, passed away. So I don't know. I can tell someone who lost someone when I'm going out with us that the Lord will provide for you. Yeah.
And it might just be the word of God that they need right there at that moment. Ask to someone, you say pray about first though, but ask someone, how can I pray for you? If you see someone who's going through something, how can I pray for you? What do you need? Those are all things in witnessing. And bless someone with a gift, Sister Ben. Think about that. Someone who might be in need. And then if they don't look like they're in need, just bless them find in their spirit sometimes. And help them out. And then I'll tell you a few things not to do, and I'm out of here. Pray. Speak to please God when you're uh, uh, witnessing. Do read your Bible. Because they can look at you and say, how do you know? If you say this and that, tell me how. Jesus, I know Paul, I know who are you. Be positive. There's so much negativity in the world already. Be positive.
You may come by letter of candidate for baptism or Christian experience. Just come. Amen. If you want to be a member of this house, just come. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Will it be enough? Will there be enough? You may want to just come and pray. Come on, let us pray together. Let's pray together today. There may be something we have need of. Come on, let's join hands and pray together. Will it be enough? Come on, church. Will it be one? Yes, right now. Just come. That's all you have to do is just come. Think about your life right now. Why not turn it over to the Lord and let Him be the fixer of your life? The off and the finish. Yes, He will. Yes, He will. Yes, He will. may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Right now, today, just come. It's nothing better. They know in Jesus. He is sweeter as the days go
become a member of Martha Day and they both come under Christian experience. Yes. We have Sister Sissy Goins. Amen. Who wants to become a member of Martha Davis. And she wants to be a candidate for baptism. Oh, 
so worthy, amen. He is so worthy. He's so worthy. New members, he's so worthy. Old members, he's so worthy. Saints of God, he's so worthy. Visitors, he's so worthy. You don't even have to be saved, but the Bible said, let everything. Let everything. If you're breathing right now, let everything.
Also, prayer meeting will be held the first Wednesday at 6 p.m. And Bible study will be held on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, uh, the focus is prayer, praying on purpose. Also, our annual Benjamin's Day will be observed July as today. We will have um, we will have lunch served after this service. Also, uh, Reverend Jones and the senior choir will be on worship service with members of Faith Temple uh, College on July the 30th at 4 p.m. And the Bethel District's 128th Association will convene on July 31st through August 3rd. It will be held at Rock of Ages Missionary Baptist Church. The service will begin nightly at 6 p.m. The theme is Building Back Better, Creatively, Courageously, and Collectively. The scripture is Nehemiah 2, 17 through 20. The focus is how to build a healthy church. Right. Do we have any other announcements? Sure. I was going to try and meet with the brothers at the church today. But since we have so much going on today, I decided to postpone it next Sunday. But next Sunday, I would like to meet the members of the Brotherhood and any new members that wish to join the Brotherhood, I would like to meet with you also. So next Sunday, I will, I will, we we'll make this next Sunday, have about five or ten minutes of your time after service. Amen. 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 Good morning, Martha Davis. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, uh, we're having that. Because we have our annual back to school bash um, this Thursday the 27th. And we would appreciate all any and all school supplies that you can donate uh, from ages from preschool through 12th grade. And uh, we will uh, we can use pencils, papers, even backpacks, pens, rulers, glue, colored pencils, anything dealing with school supplies for these ages. And there are back to school bash. We do have games, food, and, and we will be giving out the backpacks this Thursday. So uh, we would appreciate any and all donations. You can also donate uh, $25, which is uh, would supply a backpack to someone. Last year we did hand out upwards around 600, and and so hopefully we can meet that goal or surpass it this year. Uh, so if, if you were to write a check, write it to Appalachian Ministries of the Smokies, or as our acronym is AMOS, AMOS. And, and any and all donations would be appreciated. We appreciate that. And thank you.
because the men, they have a little something for you all. But we just want you to know that we appreciate you and we would love for you to come and join the Sunday School. Come and just be a part of our church family. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Myrna, Ms. Baker, Ms. Sissy, you don't know how you have brightened this day of coming and wanting to join our church family. Amen. And believe me, we will love you. We will do what does that Lord to make you feel you're at home. Yes. Thank you for that message. Amen. It was the circle that we need. We need this. Reverend Charles, you give it to us, and she gave it to us this morning. Thank you for coming in and sharing in your power what the Lord has given you to share with the rest of us. We appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> but to all of you, to the bank of uh, Vance, Sister Bree Luck already thanked you for being, you know, every year you come and we appreciate you coming because you come just in time to be a part of our celebration yes. of Men and Women's Day. And we are so thankful. We're thankful for your ancestors Amen. that started this church, oh, yes. that, that were a part of this church. And like you said, Great grandfather's over there on that planet. But for all of you, I, my wish is that the Lord bless you, that He continue to just shower you with everything that you need and take it from one who knows. Just because He doesn't give it to you when you ask for it, you go. He's always on time. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 